few months, what have you been doing? What have been the questions you've been asking yourselves? And what does the new world normal look like for you? Apart from binge watching Netflix, I've spent some quality, precious time with my family. I've learned some new skills. I've walked miles and discovered some really beautiful places around me that I didn't know even existed. My house has been decluttered. I've tried to decorate, I do use this term um, lightly, with an attempt to um, homeschool my two gorgeous monsters, which has been easy said. And I'm sure most of you have had some sort of similar experience or can relate to aspects of what I'm saying. But the one thing I've done differently over this last year has been to make time to self-reflect. I've been reflecting on the past, the present and the future and on how I can harness this power of this. So imagine going to a new city and using your favourite maps app to get around. And this is the analogy we're going to use when we're starting this self-reflection journey. So we're going to start with understanding where you are. So let's call this the GPS signal, the here and now on the map. And on this map, you can see the roads and these we can look to as being the path. And when we put that postcode in, we can see where we want to go. So we're going to look at this as the future. Before we go on to this journey of discovery, let's have a look at the very definition of self-reflection. What is it? Do you self-reflect already? And what does it mean to you? Think about looking in a mirror. What do you see? A reflection of yourself. And we are usually only ever looking in the mirror to see what we look like on the outside. However, do we take the time to think deeper with more introspection? Self-reflecting is not just about seeing what is in front of you or thinking about what has happened, but it is about asking yourself those really rather tough questions. Those questions that provoke thinking and deeper understanding. It's really about holding up a mirror to your inner self and being completely honest about what you see. So I recently went to my son's school and they had this amazing display of mirrors on the wall. And the caption they had on the wall was, meet the person in charge of your future, success, words and behavior. That person is you. And I find this so inspirational from a young level. So remember, the beauty of this is that there is no right or wrong answers because the authentic self is different for everyone. I found that adding self-reflection into my daily life has given me a new perspective to life. It's allowed me to be grateful for what I've got and also see and appreciate the successes and failures, the opportunities and challenges and the mental and physical development that makes each one of us who we are. And it's important to remember that self-reflection is not a moment of judgment or criticism. It's an opportunity to identify your strengths assess your values and goals and track where your growth needs to happen. Now, I tend to reflect in many moments when I'm driving home from work or when I'm out on, um, on a walk or even when I'm cooking or more specific times like first thing in the morning when it is nice and quiet, when, you know, media hasn't started, the television's still off, you know, um, my phone's still charging or sometimes even before I go to bed. Either way, it's important for you to find a way that works for you. This way, I can integrate self-reflection into my daily life. I've also found writing reflections really helpful. And with the wonders of technology, this can be on a device, a phone, a tablet, a good old-fashioned pen and paper, a diary or even a journal. And I found that visually seeing my thoughts has helped me process them and evaluate them differently to having them as a whirlwind going around in my brain. I've also found it helpful sharing aspects of my self-reflection with a few trusted others. We've all heard the saying, a problem shared is a problem halved. But I don't think that's too far from the truth. And I found this has helped me self-check my ideas and thoughts, often stop me being too critical about myself. So let's start. Let's look at the here and now. So have you heard of, the, um, of Professor Gary Rolfe? In 2001, he and his colleagues developed the what, the so what and the now what model of self-reflection. This has been mostly used in the professional sense, but I think it can be adapted to all aspects of life. So when using this model of reflection, my reflection would go like this. So let's look at the what for now. 
So I start by reflecting on my day. And if I was asked myself, if I was to able to relive this day, what would I do differently? I think about particular situations of what's happened. I also focus on my achievements and also think about the consequences of my actions. And quite often we're all on autopilot, aren't we? We're, you know, we're just carrying on transactionally, completing our daily tasks without really thinking what we're actually doing. So this gives me the opportunity to reflect on the actual day and think about what my feelings have been in situations. And I ask myself some, some questions. I ask myself, well, why did it make me, made me sad? Why did it make me angry? Or why did it make me happy? And what was it that got in the way? Was it fear? Was it ego? Or was it jealousy even? And why did I respond the way I did? So after I've thought about the what, I think about the so what. So when I'm thinking about the so what, I start to reflect on well, what have I learned about myself in that situation. I start to reflect on my thought processes and what my understanding is, where I need to improve and, and what was my learning from situations. So once I've thought about the so what, I think about the now what. And I start by thinking of solutions of what I need to do in the future in order to develop myself and how can I then apply that learning to my life, not just professionally, but also on a personal level. And the other thing I started to do differently was accept the achievements and embrace the positive things that may have happened in that day as well, no matter how big or small. So what did I discover? Well, there's far too much um, to cover in a 20 minute presentation, but here are my initial thoughts over the last year. I look back at my 20 year career and I felt struggled that I found that I struggled to find role models. And at times I felt a bit directionless and a bit disillusioned. Um, and, and at times I didn't even trust my own judgment. And at times I've also felt a cycle of disrepair of what's going on. So to address this, I took control. I moved out of my comfort zone and applied for a job with a national focus. I found a mentor to provide challenge and support. And I then stopped looking for external role models and looked at becoming my own role model with the values and strengths that I admired in others. I looked to be a role model for myself, my families, my co colleagues, and create a legacy which I could be proud of. I reflected on how I didn't want to be. Now, I'm sure we've all been in those situations. Um, um, where around, you know, family, friends, colleagues, managers, leaders, and we've had that internal monologue, you know, how I don't want to be. Um, and so I use that to start thinking, well, what kind of role model do I want to be? I also decided to be more curious. Now, I'm quite curious already by nature. Those who know me will know this. But I found that being more curious about my ideas helped me to be more creative. My curiosity then developed new ideas from new people and this also helped me discover how I best learned. I also started to experiment and take control of my own learning and work. And this has allowed me to be uniquely me. I've broadened my knowledge circles through diverse connections and conversations. And I know you're asking yourself, well, how have you done that over this last year of lockdown? But this is where technology and social media has been a great thing. It's allowed me to connect with individuals all around the world who have been really inspirational, who have changed my thinking, which has then given me growth. I started to share my work and seek sense with my new existing networks, and this has helped me to learn collectively. I also started seeing the world through several lenses. This then helped me develop a shared understanding, not only with colleagues, but also with my family and my friends. I started developing my own strengths to define my unique voice and my own leadership style. And I realise there is no influence without substance and that influence spreads on the pollens of generous actions, helping each other and sharing. And trust is the currency. It's important to be authentic and consistent. I think I found my momentum. I found my energy. I found my direction. My confidence grew as my connections increased and I found an expanding group of people I could rely on for advice and feedback. And this helped me create direction of where I want to go. I also stopped viewing people in hierarchies and more as individuals, each with their own challenges. 
I started to focus on reflective goal setting and self-advocacy and started to celebrate milestones and understand my strengths and identify and articulate my areas for growth. I realised that growth and change can be painful, but nothing is as painful as staying stuck somewhere where you do not belong. So that's what I did when I was looking at the now, and they were my thinkings. So then I started to think about where I'd been, those roads leading up to that GPS signal, the path. As you said before, I'm a podiatrist by uh, profession, and often when I'm discussing management plans or new treatment plans with my patients, I use the analogy of a journey. This helps the patient in front of me appreciate actually how far along their journey they have actually come before we start adding something new. So let's think of this together. Let's say we're walking up a beautiful mountain. Our focus is often and is always going to be on the summit and the distance which needs to be covered. And within this, some of our concerns may be some of these unknown paths that may lay ahead. We continue this journey as we go along. However, at times we need to stop, we need to turn around and we need to take time to appreciate the immense ground we have already covered to where we are and appreciate what we have achieved. It is therefore important to slow down and reflect on where you have been and this will then give you momentum to move forward. Again, I use so what, the now what, uh, the what, the so what, and the now what to do this. So what did I discover? I realised I thought more about all the things that had gone wrong rather than appreciate all the things that had gone right. I realised that we're all human, we're going to mistakes after all. And self-reflection enabled me to make these mistakes and failures, which I felt they were in my head, um, and look to try and prevent them from happening again in the future. I took on the no-lose model and thinking about every situation was a win in some way. And there was always something that could be taken from every situation. This then allowed me to get rid of so much emotional luggage I'd been carrying around without realising. And I actually felt lighter. I created my own narrative and embraced the following. I am strong at, and this is something that you should ask yourself. I am strong at, and I thought about all the things I am strong at. I am the go-to person for, and I started thinking about all the things people come to me for. And I am at my best when, and I decided to put myself in more situations where I could be my best. The past makes us who we are, but it also makes us remember who we want to be. And I see self-reflection of the past as a reset button for the goals you ultimately want to achieve and discover, what you wish to repeat and what needs to change. I'm sure you've all heard the saying, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. And I found that self-reflection of the past helped improve my self-awareness. It gave me perspective. It allowed me to respond, not react. And it helped me challenge assumptions and take a step back to debate the validity of that belief. It also helped me facilitate level of learning, a deeper level of learning. So let's look about where we want to go. Let's have a look at the future. We've put that postcode in and we're on this journey. Again, I use the same framework, the what, the so what, and the now what. Having looked into the past and where you've been and set the foundations from now, time to look into the future. So I started to identify my growth opportunities and look for new projects which, which and interests that aligned with what I considered were my strengths, ones that pushed me out of my comfort zone. And I looked for what I would like to learn and individuals I want to learn from, creating collaboration of ideas. And I also realised it's okay to be unconventional and it's important to see things from new points of view. I also realised that the commitment was the key. And this life is a journey, it's not a destination. So you may want to find something you are strong in and think about how to expand this to a larger scope. Ultimately going from learning to doing or leading to teach. And I thought about how I'm going to rebalance my time because I didn't want to be overwhelmed. 
by all the new opportunities. But ask yourself, what fuels you? Continue doing the things that give you the energy and sustain who you authentically are. Where are your gaps? What are your unique strengths? And what unique roles can you do that no one else can? Also remember, what are the things you can deprioritize? Delay those things that are gonna stretch you too thin or suck out that energy that keeps you positive. So again, the what, the so what, and the now what model is what I use. So in conclusion, I want to leave you with these thoughts. Self-reflection is not always easy and it can take time, effort, energy, and purposeful thinking. And I'm sure we've all felt overwhelmed at some point, especially over this last year, where you know we felt as if you know it's difficult to, to, to make it through the day, making it feel even impossible to make time for self-reflection. However, if we keep running on this treadmill of life and keep thinking we don't have time to waste, we're never gonna have time. To, we need to make that time to do this. We need to stop, we need to get off that treadmill and reflect on what is working on what is not and identify what to keep on what needs to change. We are all uniquely different with our unique strengths and attributes, rather like these little miss, little Mr. Men characters. We all come in different shapes and sizes, each with our own unique selves. There is no one size fits all. Now more than ever, it's crucial to focus on yourself. Ensure you're future-proofing your skills for the future. Rather than carrying on doing things as you have always done, take the time to reflect in positive ways. Be smarter. Reflect to better face challenges. Give yourself insight and make each day more fulfilling. And remember, there is no right or wrong way to do this. There is just a way that works for you. So I say to you, stop. Take a step back from life or a particular situation. Look, identify and get perspective on what you notice and see. Listen, listen to your inner self, the one that comes out when you give it space to emerge and act. Identify the steps you need to take to move forward, to adjust, to change or improve. And I want to leave you with this final saying from Da Vinci. But knowing is not enough, we must apply. But being willing is not enough, we must do. Thank you for your time.